Casey, welcome to Secret Sessions. Thank you. Aiden, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, and welcome to London as well. Thanks. Uh, do you get to come here a lot? Um, this is actually, this is my third time here. Okay. And yeah, it's a great city, I love it. Yeah? So. And how do you find uh, that your music goes down to a London audience? Because obviously country is, is huge mm -hmm. in America. It's, it's, it's an industry almost. Yeah. But here it's, it's obviously not, not saying it, it's not as big really. Right. So how do you find it sort of goes down to the, the UK audiences? I was really surprised um, that there was such a big country following here. Mm. Um, and I guess from what I've kind of gathered that it's kind of growing a little bit, um, which is cool. Um, but I would hope that my music kind of appeals to people that just like music of all kinds, not just country listeners. So, um, so hopefully that's the case. Mm. But take us back to the beginning now as well, uh, for those who aren't maybe aware of you here in the UK. Tell us how you got into music and, and when you first like, picked up a guitar yeah. and started playing. Um, it was, I was really young. Mm. Um, I started singing when I was probably seven or eight and was just like really encouraged by my family to, to kind of get out there and, um, and learn to play an instrument. I started playing the mandolin first, but then guitar, I got a guitar when I was 12 for Christmas. Why the mandolin? Mando, because it was small. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess that was it. I mean, guitar right was like, size. it was like really big for my hands, mm. kind of. But, um, and we had a mando at the house, so just kind of picked it up, learned, and the chords are pretty easy, so. Okay. Um, and were your parents in musical? No, I mean, my mom has like a musical ear, per se, like a little bit. Um, but nobody's a musician. Um, but it's cool because creativity was kind of always encouraged, like in my house. Like mm. my mom's a painter, like a visual artist. So just in all senses of just kind of like describing yourself or like expressing yourself, I mean, um, they always encourage that. So okay. it probably helped. And then you, so you moved on to get to the guitar. Mm -hmm. And who was your influences? What were you listening to that um, got you wanting to play? I mean, it was just kind of all over the map. Uh, I mean, in my house, like I grew up hearing um, like a lot of Tom Petty and like some Texas singer songwriters and um, a lot of Dixie Chicks and like mm. Jewel, Old Jewel and stuff like that. Um, a lot of like, you know, older country stuff too, which I'm still kind of inspired by. Okay. So. And it was quite a small town as well that you, mm -hmm. you grew up in and then you moved to Nashville. Yes. How did that affect where you were going with your career? Um, well, after high school, I moved to Austin, which is a really cool kind of um, eclectic, like pretty liberal city, I guess, in the middle of Texas. Um, so that that kind of helped me figure some things out, you know, about myself and my music. And then after that, moved to Nashville. And I don't know, I think being there and being like surrounded by so many people who like want to do what you're doing mm. um, pushes you to really figure it out and figure out how to stand out. Um, because otherwise you're just kind of lost. And, and it, but it took a while uh, from being there till you got around to releasing your, uh, your album on a major label. I know that you've done a lot of self-releasing. and uh, Why did it take so long to get to that point, would you say? Was it just about um, a, a growing phase with you, yeah, that sort of thing? Yeah, I, like, I didn't mind that it kind of took a second because mm. um, it, like, when I first moved to town, I became like a staff writer for, um, for this publishing company. So, I got to just like write as many um, you know times a week as I could and um, really find the people that like I really like dig writing wise and um, after doing that for a little bit I kind of found a mindset and a, um, a sound that I feel like was kind of my own instead of just kind of like what might work you know for like a female that's singing um, so and I like at first when I first got to town and I maybe had like you know a couple opportunities to, to do something I didn't want to just jump on like the first thing that came my way because I knew that, you know, I hadn't really found like something that I was really, like a sound that I was really proud of yet. So yeah. after I kind of moved more towards that, I was like, I was just kind of more ready to put it out there. Because you only get like, you know, one real shot for the world to kind of yeah. see who you are. And if it's, if you're not, if you don't know who, what that is, then nobody else will either. So. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that one shot because uh, it's, I mean, it's really paid off with your, your, your album on a, on a major label, your first album, uh, same trailer, different park, mm -hmm. number two in the Billboard yeah. charts uh, and number one in the country charts as well. How did that feel? I mean, after spending so long writing for other people and, mm -hmm. and sort of holding back and like you said, not taking the plunge, right. how did it feel that when you finally took the plunge, it was received so incredibly well by it so many people? It was a huge weight off my shoulders. Cause <laughs> it was relief. I, it, was, it was, it was, it was like, relief, but right. it was, um, it felt really good because 
you know, I mean, a lot of myself, my mind, and like um, just my time in general went into making this project that, you know, I, I was really hoping people would connect with. And um, like I said, not just country people, you know, like I, I'm, I love country music so much, but, um, but I, I love so many different kinds of music. I just want to make good music. So, um, so it makes me feel good that, you know, that uh, it seems like people, people of, you know, of all different kinds of tastes or whatever are, are kind of digging it. So it, it just, it, it made me feel good and it made me excited to uh, keep doing it. Mm. And you've been kind enough to perform a couple of tracks for us yes. from the album as well today. Yeah. Tell us uh, uh, about those tracks. Okay. Um, well, I, the two songs that I play today, um, one of them is called Silver Lining and mm. it's, it's actually, it's one of my favorites off the record. It's funny because Follow Your Arrow is the other, the other one that I did today, and those two were the very last that I added to the record. Mm. Um, the record was pretty much done, and like, we, you know, we had pretty much spent all of the budget, and like, you know, the presses were about to start printing, you know, everything, and I just like put a halt on it. And I, I wrote those last two kind of last minute, and I, it was just like where my head was kind of at the time, and I was right. just like, these have to be on here, these have to make it, so. Um, I'm really glad that I, I did that. And I really want to ask about uh, Follow the Arrow. Because mm -hmm. um, this is, I, I don't want to come across in any way sort of as narrow-minded towards country music, but it's some really brave topics you sort of face in there. Uh, was that sort of scary? Because I mean, you're basically sort of, I suppose sometimes we have this vision of, uh, of country music being quite sort of safe and tame and it's get married, love each other, marry, you know, and, and, and this sort of thing. But what you're covering there is you're, you're talking about you know smoking uh, joint and uh, kissing you know girls kissing girls and and uh, getting drunk all these things that you're you're covering. Yeah. Did, did you know how brave you were being? Did it feel like you were being brave coming out with that? Um, I mean, you have to have some kind of balls, I guess, in that genre to maybe say some of those things. But those things aren't. Um, controversial to me like sure. in my world so I was just singing something that I was you know inspired by just the sense of um, of just people just doing what makes them happy because mm -hmm. like really it's just kind of about making yourself happy like what and that and, and it's not really meant to um, necessarily push buttons it's just there to say that like no matter what side of the coin you're on, like people are gonna have an opinion about it, and mm. you're never gonna be everybody's cup of tea, and that and you're never gonna, you can't make everybody happy, so, um, so make yourself happy. So. And have you had feedback from it from a wide range of people? Yeah, definitely. Um, my feedback has been really positive. Mm. Like, I mean, it's the song that when it comes on, people, you know, recognize the most. I'd say, and um, I don't know. It just seems like. People are excited about the message, which is cool. Um, mm. I'm getting more excitement about it than you know any kind of you know negativity. So fantastic. That's cool. Right, it was my favorite song on the album. Absolutely Thanks. loved it. So I'm Thanks. really pleased you played that. You chose yeah. to play us. My confession is, um, I ran over a lady one time. Uh, I'm also on mushrooms at this present moment. To see more of my secret sessions and to watch some other cool shit, hit subscribe. Follow your arrow, girl.